Hello, my name is John, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you some of the approaches and techniques that I use designing and integrating sound effects and interactive music on Audio Kinetic Wise to Unity Game Engine. For this demonstration I choose to work on the 3D Beginner Complete project available on Unity Asset Store. This is a very simple platformer game where you try to reach to an endpoint in the map without getting noticed by the ghosts strolling around the haunted house. In this first video, we are going to be setting up footstep sounds. I'll show you how to randomize the footstep sounds, create numerous variants from 8 elementary sounds and also how to switch between different footstep types when the player goes from one floor type to another. Let's begin. First, let's start by importing the footstep sound effects. I'm going to add this footsteps folder which contains three different types of footstep sounds that our main character would be strolling around throughout the map. Here, let's have a listen to these different types of footstep sounds. First one is rock. The second one is wood, which will be the most frequent one that we are going to be hearing. And the third one is tile, when the player enters the bathrooms and such. I'm going to start by putting each of these different types to their own random containers so that the sounds would be triggered randomly from the pool of 8 sounds. We are going to be treating the wood footstep sound a little bit differently because it will be the most frequent sound triggered. So I like to randomize this one a little bit more. What I'm going to do is first create a sequence container for the wood sound and then underneath it create two random containers that will contain the exact set of footstep sounds. A footstep sound generally has two peaks in it. One is when the heel steps to the floor and the other is when toe steps in. By editing the sounds in these two containers differently, I'll make the first random container only play the heel sound of the footstep and the second random container only play the toe touching the floor. Here I'm opening up the audio editor of the first sound in the footstep underscore wood underscore heel container and dragging the playback region only to the beginning of the heel sound. Let's listen. For the exact same sound in the toe container, I'll only select the region after the heel sound, which sounds like this. Now I'll do the exact same process for the rest of the sounds in both containers. Now that we have 8 different sets of heel and toe sounds, I'll select their parent sequence container, go to the playlist window and add heel random container to be played first and toe to be played afterwards. I'll also switch the play mode from step to continuous so that when the first item in the playlist plays, it will directly move on to the second one. Finally, I'll add a pitch randomizer to the parent container so that it adds another layer of differentiation between each occurrence. What we achieved here is basically created 8 times 8 64 different possible footstep sound effects from 8 elementary sounds by simply editing and cross-using them in different containers. Here is how it sounds. Now that we set up our 3 different footstep sounds, I will create a switch parameter for audio engine to switch between these 3. I go to the game sync tab and underneath the switches create a new switch group. I'm going to name this group ground type. Three different floor types will be represented in this group as a different switch, wooden, rock and tile. Now I'll go to audio tab and assign the switches to their relevant containers. But first I have to put all the footstep sound containers into a switch container. I'm going to delete this old footsteps folder since we no longer need it and name the new switch container footsteps. In the property editor general settings tab, I'll select the switch group that I want to assign to the switch container. 
which is the ground type switch group and select the default switch as wooden. I'll drag and drop the items from the contents editor to switch assignments. Now let's test if it is working. Seems to be working fine. I also have to create a play event for the footstep audio because Unity calls for events. And the final step that we are going to be doing on Wise is to create a sound bank and generate it. I will name this sound bank Player, as I plan to put all the player related sound effects here. Drag and drop the event weaver to the sound bank editor and generate all. Now we can switch to Unity to make the rest of the adjustments there. First, let's play the game to get an overall understanding of it. Currently, it has no sounds at all. As you see, when I got caught by a ghost, it is game over. Let me show you how the game ends with fast forwarding. The footstep sounds will be triggered in the animator. And to do that, we have to have a script that sends wise the particular call event that we want at the exact frame of that animation that we decided. For this purpose, we have to write a call event script. I'll go into the scripts and create a new C -sharp script and name it call event. Double clicking opens it on Visual Studio. I'll delete all these lines of quotes here and create a new public void named call event with a string s. Making the s variable a string allows us to name it however we want, so we can call any event we want from the wise with it. Underneath it in braces we will write ak sound engine event open parentheses s comma game object close parentheses semicolon. This line of code is the actual part where we send the call event to wise for any s string that we will define later on. We will also make a log on the terminal anytime this happens. This is good for later on if we want to check whether the code is working or not. I actually have to change the public void's name because it can't be the same name with the class that is under. So let's make one of the capital letters lowercase. I'll go back to Unity now and drag and drop the script to our main character game object. As you see, I already made this game object an AK audio listener and added AK soundbank player to it. Without these two components, we wouldn't hear any sound at all. Let's go to the animators tab and from the animations asset, select John at walk animation. As you can see, there's a frame by frame display of the animation that we selected here. I'll scroll down and find the events menu by moving the playback cursor frame by frame. I will decide the exact frame that I want the sound to be triggered. Here, it seems like around the frame 13, 14, the foot is down on the floor. Let's add an event here by clicking this little icon and we will change the function to the call event that we created. The string here will be the footsteps. As we saw in the code, the string should be exactly the same name that we have as wise event in order for all of this to work. I'll also find the second step and add another event to it. Here, frame 34 seems to be good. As you see, we have two events that will send a call to Wise to play the footstep audio within a single loop of this animation. Let's try if it's working. seems to be working nicely, but the problem is only the wood floor sound is triggering all over the map. The reason is we haven't yet defined different ground types that would activate the switches defined in Wise. Let's go ahead and do that. For this we will start by creating a new 3D game object and add the box collider component to it. For a game object to be able to interact with another object, it needs to have a collider attached to it. Now we will adjust the size of this object to fit this rug on the floor.
We also have to make it is trigger so that it can be triggered by another object and then attach the ground type slash rock AK switch component to it. The trigger on option will be AK trigger enter, which means that as soon as the player enters this collider, the switch will be activated. And also use other object will be clicked as well. Let's also change the starting location for our main character to somewhere over the wooden floor so that we can hear the moment it actually switched to rug. Now let's try. As you see it switched to rug once we entered the collider but doesn't switch back to its default state when we leave it because we have to drag and drop this wooden ground type switch as a component and trigger on AK trigger exit. Let's try one more time. Switches the rock and switches back to wood. Okay, pretty good. I'll change this game object name to ground type underscore rock and make copies of it for the other rocks on the game map. Let's also put all these into a folder to be more orderly and name the folder rugs. I'll also use the same method for tile floors as well, which are the bathroom here and the big room towards the end of the level. Okay, so this should cover all the floor types on the map. Let's try it one last time. Switches to rock, switches to tile, and back to wooden. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll be dealing with ambient soundscape and sounds for the other items over the map. We will dwell into setting up cone attenuators and also creating a non-repeating loop of soundscapes for this haunted house.